Psalm 16 is a beautiful expression of hope. The end of the poem brims with confidence. I shall not be shaken, verse 8 says. David is not a mere dreamer. His expectations are securely rooted in the death and resurrection of God's Son. The apostles, in fact, proved Christ's resurrection by quoting from the last half of Psalm 16. Their logic is this, David died and his body saw corruption, but he whom God raised up did not see corruption, from Acts 13, verse 35. The prophet David then, as, as Peter argues in Acts 2, foresaw and spoke about in Psalm 16 the resurrection of the Christ that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. And so Psalm 16 tells us about the life of Christ. Jesus took refuge in God, verse 1. He followed God's will even when it was hard. The references to night in verse 7 and Sheol in verse 10 are hopeful even as they suggest darkness and death. After a ministry of suffering, Jesus died in agony. Death and the grave seemed to have swallowed life. But God did not, as the psalm says, abandon Jesus to the state of death. His body did not rot in the grave, as Peter says in Acts 2, 31. The end of Psalm 16 is a victory song. Christ is unshaken, his heart is glad, his whole being rejoices, he is enjoying the pleasure of fellowship with the triune God. And this is exactly why David, the human author of Psalm 16, was hopeful. He wrote both as a prophet about Christ and as a believer united by faith to Christ. Like David, we too can find pleasure in God. All the good that we receive from God should be like a magnet drawing us closer to God himself. Closeness with the Father and the Spirit can be our chief delight as it was for Jesus. The psalm also urges us to, to delight in God's people. One of those obvious, tangible signs of a believer's love for Christ is a growing love for the saints, as verses 3 and 4 make plain. Only a foolish believer thinks that he can commune with idolaters and not share in their multiplying sorrows, per verse 4. Finally, we too can anticipate a new life with God after death. Even the grave cannot shake us from God's care, as verse 8 says. Even at death, our flesh will dwell secure, verse 9. Safely sleeping with the Lord, as the New Testament puts it in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 14. Unless Christ returns, first we will die. But Christ has died already, and he has conquered death by his powerful life. By faith, his experience, recorded beforehand in Psalm 16, can also be yours. Here, Psalm 16. A miktam of David. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my God. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another god shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore.